Hey, ¿qué tal amigos? Stuart here from Spain Speaks. Today with a bit of a different video. Today I'm going to be looking at an article that I found on the internet written by a guy who hates Spain, a guy that uh, fell in love with Spain but then fell out of love with Spain, became very disillusioned. So we're going to have a look at the points that he talks about and uh, I'll give you my opinion on on whether I agree or disagree with some of the things that he says and some of the similar experiences that I've suffered over the last 18 years living here in Spain. Now, the um, article was in a blog called Spain Made Simple. I'll link that uh, down below so you can have a look for yourself. And the title of the article is, I Hate Spain, why I hate living in Spain and why I'm leaving. And the author is a guy called Nick Anders, disillusioned expat. Now, basically, it goes uh, on to say that he came to Spain, he was in love with Spain. Uh, probably what happens to a lot of people, they come here on holidays, they love the weather, they love the laid back lifestyle, they move to a place, in this particular case it was Nerja, which is in Malaga, down in Andalusia, uh, on the border with Almeria, so it's uh, to the east of Malaga uh, capital. And um, basically he goes on to say that um, there's more downsides than upsides to living in a country like Spain. And he goes through giving five or six different reasons as to why he came to this decision. So he starts off by saying, uh, thinking of living in Spain, maybe hate is too strong a word, but okay then, I dislike Spain. I've had enough. Get me out of here. Whatever your choice, the end result is the same. I'm leaving Spain to go back to the UK. Now, a lot of people have probably uh, gone through the same thing. I don't think this bloke's the first. I don't think he'll be the last. But it is an eye-opener to show that not everybody is going to enjoy their time in Spain. I've been here for a long time, as I said, around 18 years, and I can say that during that time, it, it, you know, you're on a roller coaster ride sometimes. You're up, you're down, uh, you're happy, you're sad. Uh, it's very easy sometimes to look at only the negatives, especially when you're living outside the country that you grew up in or the country that you're most familiar with. In this uh, bloke's case, it's the UK. In my particular case, it's Australia. And you often make comparisons with your uh, with the life that you had back home and the new life that you have here so there's a lot of things that he speaks about here which I've experienced to, to be completely honest um, if you've watched any of my previous videos you'll know that I'm fairly upbeat about life in Spain and I encourage people to come and live here to try it out but I also understand that Spain is not going to be for everybody so some of the points that this uh, this person here talks about in this particular blog post are quite relevant. And I'm sure that if you are an expat or uh, a foreigner living here in Spain, a lot of these things uh, will be familiar to you as they were to me. So let's have a look. So we'll go through. So the first thing he talks about is crime. Then he talks about living and working. Then he talks about the word manana. Then he talks about customer service, getting ripped off, poor roads and facilities in Spain. Uh, and uh, that's what he goes through here. So we'll start off with the first point that he mentions, which is crime in Spain. And he says, I felt safe in Spain when I first emigrated and moved here. I didn't see any crime. People were friendly. I thought crime didn't hardly exist here until I found out that often when people are burgled in Spain, they are bound and gagged. The luckier ones are gassed, even houses with dogs. And have you noticed how many people have big dogs? Yeah, now I get it. Get hit because they poison the dogs. Now, I particularly have never experienced this type of thing. I have heard stories that in some of the coastal areas, these places are quite busy in summer, but in winter, they're left with uh, a big foreign population. And really, they're easy targets for criminals, okay? And there have been gangs over the years. I've seen it in the newspapers. I've seen it on the telly here that there are gangs that go through these resort type areas targeting specifically uh, foreigners, 
uh, wealthy um, foreigners, let's say, and these things can happen. But they can happen anywhere. This is not unique to Spain. Where I live here in Madrid, I've never heard of anybody being gassed. I've never heard of anybody being tied up, uh, at least in the area that I live. Um, perhaps it's because it's a residential area. There's a lot of activity in the streets. So it's not easy for gangs of criminals to come in and uh, rob houses in this sense. Uh, I know that it does exist, but uh, let's just say it's not common and it hasn't affected me yet. Touch wood. So there is crime here. Um, I wouldn't say it's one of the reasons to move back to the UK because this thing could probably happen in the UK as well. I don't know, but I'm sure that you, there are criminals there. I know that in Australia, uh, robberies, ha house burglaries are quite common. My parents were burgled last year uh, while they were upstairs. Somebody came in and burgled the part downstairs. So it happens there, it happens here, it happens everywhere. So that's his first negative. And all I can say is that, that crime is here crime is everywhere but in my opinion the crime in Spain is not necessarily of a violent nature that you would get if you went to a more dangerous continent I'm not going to mention any of the continents names but you get the idea that in some places living as an expat you would be um, in a lot more dangerous situation from a crime point of view. He goes on to say, Trouble is Spain is very close to some poor African countries and there are lots of poor immigrants, mostly illegal, who will do anything to survive. The next point he mentions is living and working in Spain. I moved to Spain for a better life. I hate how I work harder in Spain than I ever did in the UK. I moved here with savings of £15,000 and have pretty much nothing but the shirt on my back. So he's had a bit of a bad time with the labour market. I figured that with so many expats living in Spain, there must be a bundle of potential new business opportunities and companies looking for staff. I was so wrong. I soon found out that jobs and opportunities in Spain were few and far between, apart from the obvious ones. Now, what he means by obvious ones, I don't know. Maybe it's teaching English. It could be. Maybe it's uh, doing some other type of uh, uh, translation work, obviously, something that ex expats or uh, English speakers can do. But he hated villa cleaning, he hated cleaning pools, and he hated working in bars until 2 a.m. Now, basically, if you're going to come to Spain and work in a bar, or if you're going to clean a villa or a pool, basically, you're going to be uh, not earning a lot of money. It's going to be a pretty crappy job. Okay, Spanish people don't want to do those jobs. I can't see why a person from the UK would want to come here and do that. Try and do something else. Um, you know, um, uh, he hated working. He hated building work in the baking midday sun. Well, obviously that's the case. If you're going to be a labourer, you want to be well paid. Spain does not pay its labourers well. They work long hours. They don't get a lot of money a lot of the time. And as he said, the sun is hot, especially in the summer months. So why you would come to Spain to be a labourer, I have no idea. So uh, try and do one of the obvious things that you can do according to your skill set. And if you speak English, get a qualification and try to do that. There's demand for that type of work. You won't have to be in the midday sun. Okay, so keep that in mind before you decide to come here. That uh, jobs are limited. Spain has a 20% unemployment rate. In Andalusia specifically, it's in the high 30s. Why would you get a job when there's uh, literally millions of Spanish people looking to do the same thing and they can't get a job? All right, the next point here is the word manana or manana, I suppose he wants to say. Obviously, his keyboard doesn't have the ñ. Like everyone else, I thought this was a funny joke at first. Every time a person in Spain, whether Spanish or British, let me down, I would grin and say manana like it was okay or normal. When I'm paying for a job, I want it done as promised. Okay, Spain does have a bit of a manana attitude, which means that people are not in a hurry sometimes to get things done. Um, but again, uh, I've, I only know uh, the experiences that I had before I came here, and more or less, uh, in some ways, you can compare the quality of labor here and ho back home in Australia. Um, 
People have a manana attitude. Maybe in Andalusia they do. In Madrid, people have less of a manana attitude because it's a big city. It's a dynamic city. People are in a hurry to get things done. So it depends where you're going to go. And again, if you're going to a resort place like Nerja, uh, obviously people are not in a hurry to do anything because they live off tourism, basically. Okay, So all of these extra services are uh, perhaps not as efficient as you would expect them to be. So again, be careful where you choose to live. If you're looking to uh, you know, live in the sun, looking, live in one of these resort places, remember that that's going to be possibly one of the downsides. But if you live in a bigger city like Madrid or Barcelona, this technically shouldn't be a problem. So the next one, point number four, customer service in Spain. Now, just before we begin, I would probably have to agree with him on this one. Customer service in Spain can at sometimes be absolutely terrible. Uh, in a country that lives off uh, services, uh, customer service is one of the things that, in my opinion, is lacking. Again, if I compare it to other places that I've been to. Um, so he says, what I hate about Spain is when I go into a shop and stand waiting while the assistant chats away to their friend or relative totally ignoring me and everyone else. Yeah, it happens, okay? You walk into a shop and the, the shop assistants are not really interested in making a sale. It's because their salary is low and basically they don't give a, 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 a shit, for lack of a better word, uh, about the job um, because they just don't, and that's what it is. I mean, if you walk into a, a shop to buy clothes, one of the big uh, uh, chains, uh, more than likely you're going to get this type of um, uh, attitude, and that's just the way it is. So he goes on to say that in this global economy, you can't, you just can't see the Spanish having a chance against the likes of American, British, or Indian companies who are hungry and put customer service first. Maybe that's right. Maybe that's right. Yeah. There's no customer service in Spain. Again, I would have to agree with him here uh, a little bit. Uh, much of the time uh, you are served when people feel like it and you get little help and assistance and often you are not even greeted at the counter. You greet them. Yeah. Okay. That's one of the negative aspects of Spain, the customer service. Uh, again, it all depends. Um, you know, some places are good, but the majority of the times it can be pretty bad. Bureaucracy is horrendous. If you're coming to Spain, bring a photocopier. That's probably good advice. Bring a photocopier if you're deciding to come to Spain. Now, the next one he talks about is getting ripped off in Spain. And he says, I hate that people prey on each other in Spain. Everyone seems so desperate that getting cheated is a story every expat I know can tell. I personally put an eight grand deposit down on an apartment and the estate agent did a runner with my cash. It happens. It happens. Okay. You have to be careful. You have to make sure that you are dealing with a reputable uh, real estate agent, somebody that has a good local reputation, somebody who has been recommended by others. Uh, I've heard of this problem uh, all over Spain where you put down a deposit for an, um, uh, an apartment, uh, even if it's still being constructed, you put the money down and the builders do a runner. It's common. It happens to Spanish people. It happens to foreigners. I wouldn't say that it is the norm, but there always is a possibility that this type of thing can happen. And again, I don't like to, you know, compare too much to where I come from. But recently in Australia, and given that the housing market is starting to crash there as well, uh, it is uh, more and more common there that builders, uh, the building companies crash, and uh, it's difficult to get your money back. And here, it's it's absolutely no different. Okay, so be careful. Do a little bit of due diligence before you invest your money uh, in property. Uh, and uh, with a little bit of luck, everything should go okay. Now, the next one he says here, the last point is poor roads and poor facilities in Spain. I hate the lack of infrastructure in Spain. The motorways, auto routes are superb as a lot of EU money has been given to Spain, but locally our roads are terrible. The amount of tires we go through because of the holes in the road is ridiculous. There's no drainage, okay? So the place floods in the summer. And he says, 
I wish I had never moved to Spain, and I urge anyone else thinking of Spain seriously con to consider my story. Yeah, okay, consider this story. Remember that Spain is not going to be a bed of roses, especially if you come here without language skills. If you come here without, without language skills and you think that Spain is going to be the same place that you spent two weeks on holiday, that is not the case, okay? It's not the case. So be careful. Uh, infrastructure. Yeah, infrastructure has gone down the drain in the last eight years. Spain has been in a crisis for a long time. And the place that I live in here, the roads are absolutely shocking. There's holes in them. Uh, sometimes, as he says here, the drains are not uh, cleaned because there's a lack of resources. There's a lack of money. The corruption scandals at a local council level have completely gutted public finances. And this is a consequence of that. But uh, I don't necessarily agree that they're terrible. Uh, in some areas they are. Obviously, some areas are going to be worse than others. And again, Andalusia is the, um, I don't like to say this, but it is the one of the poorest regions in Spain, and it is one of the countries where infrastructure in some places is lacking. So I would agree with that point there that uh, roads and facilities in Spain since the crisis began have uh, unfortunately gone downhill a little bit. And he finishes off by saying that you really must try living in Spain, uh, then don't sell your house in the UK, don't burn all your bridges. Good advice, okay? So keep your options open. Come here for a few months. Check it out. I would agree with what he says here. Uh, you know, don't burn your bridges. Keep your options open. Don't completely sever ties with the UK um, or whichever country you come from because you might not find that this is the paradise that you have been looking for. But I will say that once you do get used to Spain, it does grow on you. And I think that in general, the experience is more positive than negative. At least it has been in my personal opinion. And I'm not going to go through the rest of the comments here. But if you do go through the comments uh, after reading the article, you will see that the majority of comments that have been left here uh, in reply to this article are positive because people understand that sometimes the pros do outweigh the cons. So that's my take on this person's article, a uh, person that absolutely hates Spain. As I said at the beginning, I don't hate Spain. Uh, life is a roller coaster, and it is a roller coaster whether you're living here or whether you're living home. Obviously, you reminisce a little bit about the good times that you had at home, and you think that they are sometimes better than the ones that you're having now. But I would encourage people to stick it out. The culture aspect is also very good. Food and drink are absolutely top notch. And there is a general vibe here that I find uh, fairly positive, let's say. So take his advice on, on board. Don't burn all your bridges. Keep your options open. Come here with open eyes and open mind and everything should be more or less okay. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the section below. Remember to give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. I'll see you in the next video blog about Spain. Hasta luego.